I think it's been great that it's been around for 50 years, because that would have been most likely my dad would have watched when he was younger as well. I remember a weekly ritual that our school participated in, which was wheeling an old TV into the multi-purpose room. I remember where I was sitting, I remember the room, and I just, I mean, I loved that program. I'd really look forward to it every week where we'd all sit together as a class and, and watch the TV, and I used to think, uh, I'd love to do that as a job one day. We'd flick it on, and it, you know, being in the country, there was always a bit of static involved, and a bit of uh, mucking about with the rabbit ears on top of the TV to get the signal. Yeah, I remember it was every, I think, Wednesday when the teacher would wheel in the television into the classroom and get really excited, uh, and then BTN would come on. Welcome to a celebration marking 50 years of Behind the News. Tonight we're going to take a look back at a program many of us grew up with. It was the first of its kind anywhere in the world and inspired a generation of young Aussies to take an interest in the world around them, including me. Thank you for joining me for our first BTN of the year and officially my first as host. Earlier this year, I felt honoured to become BTN's newest host and I wanted to know more about what came before me. So let's find out together, starting way back in 1968, when Behind the News was born. In 1968, there really wasn't a lot of Australian television being made. There were cop shows like Homicide and Division 4 and Skippy the Bush Kangaroo was around, but the ABC were really punching above their weight. They had Bellbird, and they were making a lot of children's television. Hello, I am the man in the moon. And that was also the year that they began Behind the News. Well, it wasn't called BTN then, but there was a feeling that there should be a current affairs show that went to kids to the top of the primary school and the bottom of the secondary school to explain some of the issues of the day. Well, that's the picture in many parts of the world at the moment. <laughs> Look at this well, fashion right here. That was the start of the world's first kids' news show. Anne was its script editor. It was a tiny team with a tiny budget Stand by to record. and a makeshift set. Aussie actor Peter Sumner was named its first presenter. He'd later go on to appear in Star Wars. Word went out to schools, letting them know to tune in. And on June 5th, 1968, the program made its debut, although its name at that stage wasn't all that creative. The holiday for the Queen's birthday is this month. Actually, her birthday is not in June, it's really April the 21st. But it's a tradition to celebrate the British monarch's birthday in June, a tradition that has never been changed. I do remember it was very well received, it was terrific, and teachers liked it, and so we knew it was a goer. Anne took over as producer the following year, and with that came an important change. So that's when I said, well, look, current affairs is a bit flat as a title. Um, and the head of television for our department, a woman called Betty Parsons, said, well, you come up with another title. And then I thought, well, what's the program trying to do? So it's giving the stories that are behind the news that make sense of that news. And uh, Betty Parsons sniffed at first and she said, mm, behind the news, It'll sound as if we're running late all the time. <laughs> and we're really behind with it. Hello again and welcome to another edition of Behind the News. The show definitely wasn't behind with it. But while BTN had a host of hosts in the following years, the idea of a woman presenting the show was still out of the question. I wanted a younger person and I thought a woman. But that didn't get accepted. It was still considered too radical an idea for the current affairs program. The 70s brought colour. 
and some slightly more relaxed presenting styles. Well, this one's not that historical. If you went to the Melbourne Cup and had uh, chicken and champagne uh, and were a gentleman, you could, you could wear that in uh, early November. But the show's mission was the same, as it covered some of the biggest news events from around the country and the world. In 1971, Jakarta was declared a closed city. No one could migrate from the country unless they had a job and somewhere to live. Over the past few days, many Australians have had their first chance to see the new Concorde supersonic airliner. Chrissy's rather special. She's a Darwin girl. Almost a year ago, the city in which she lives was devastated by a cyclone. There was a lot of debris and tin and stuff around, flying everywhere. What did you think was going to happen? I thought we'd all get killed. Hi there. Welcome to another Behind the News. I was a fairly young person as a news presenter in those days, and I think that combination of um, actual news involvement and youth probably uh, made me a, a potential contender for the job. So I was asked to, to host BTN, and uh, it was a wonderful thing to be able to do. That's all for today. Until next week, au revoir. By the 80s, suits were thrown away in place of looks like this. And this. Oh, of course, it was always Richard Moorcroft in his skivvy, I think. I do think, oh, God, did I actually buy that T-shirt? Uh, but, yes, I have to also accept responsibility. They were all my T-shirts. And so I was wearing, you know, orange shirts or flower power shirts and things like that, even though that was out of fashion already, but still. In fact, as soon as I got out of the studio, it was like, get off, get off, get off me. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Paul Higgins, and welcome along to Behind the News for today. As you can see... I'm Paul Higgins took over the hosting news. duties in 1986. On Tuesday mornings, the show goes to air. About 10 o'clock, I go into makeup. I was actually working in radio at the time, and a friend of a friend told me they were doing auditions for the host of Behind the News. I never even thought about working in TV. I came in, I had to do some reading of scripts and everything like that to the camera and all the rest of it, and shock horror, I got the job, which surprised me because all these other journalists, experienced TV journalists, had already applied and been auditioned. So I was really lucky. It was great. Back then, BTN was broadcast live to air. It was a bit of a concern and you had to read the scripts from the prompter and things like that and uh, everyone was a bit inexperienced at that stage because the show had just moved to Melbourne and no one quite knew what they were doing and it was a bit of a mess and so by the time we got on the air everyone was sort of all jittery and nervous and that didn't exactly help me but by the end of it it felt great yeah it was really good. Tuesday is United Nations Peace Day. We thought we'd cross live harbourside to Sydney and catch up with Eamon and some friends from St Michael's School at Borkham Hills. Live in Sydney, they're talking to Roger Bailey. What do you people think you can do about world peace, people your age? Uh, celebrate and make people know that we, we are the children, adults of tomorrow, and that we want peace. Paul Higgins was the presenter when I used to watch the show, which was the early 90s at the end of primary school for me, Don't Do Any Maths. And he he was just, like, he's such a delightful presenter and he's just one of the best presenters. Huh. Well, good morning and welcome along to Behind the News. It's our very last Behind the News for 1987. I'm Paul Higgins feeling very relaxed because today a very special program for us. Since the school holidays are coming up and everything, we decided we were going to relax and take the program to the beach. I think one of the things with BTN that I, I just instinctively knew was that you don't talk down to kids. You could never do that. It would be completely wrong. They'd just immediately turn off. What would be the point? So it was great to just be able to be there, like almost like a big brother, just explaining what's going on on the news. Oh, missed. <laughs> saying silly things sometimes, having some fun as well. It, it was really good to sort of communicate in that way. So what are your favourite stories uh, from being on the show back in the 80s? One show I do remember in particular, uh, we had some crocodiles and other reptiles brought into the studio. If I put him down on the ground, he won't be too impressed. What happened was we put it on the studio floor, the lights heated the crocodile up and of course that meant mm, it started moving. Because it was a live show, Come on, Henry. wasn't much we could do about it. And I didn't notice the crocodile moving 
but I kept seeing the camera operators jump back and sort of, you know, sort of, oh, <laughs> this kind of thing. And I thought, uh-oh, <laughs> it's moving. Got yeah, quite a minute. Don't put your hands near his no, mouth. No, I won't do that, David. <laughs> I also got to talk to the then Prime Minister, Bob Hawke. And he had a reputation for being a bit fearsome and I'd never met him before. Having seen a story on Behind the News, some students from the primary school and high school became concerned about the destruction of the Amazon rainforest. Will you please accept our petition and that of the high school students and present them to Parliament? Mr Hawke, welcome along to Behind the News. Thank you very much, Paul. We've just seen the students at Raynell Arisa. But he was actually really good. He gave us plenty of time and a great interview on BTN. Because I like to see the kids of Australia are being concerned with what's becoming an increasingly important issue for all of us, but particularly for them. That's what the future of this planet's going to be. Upstairs in graphics... Technology was starting to play a bigger role in explaining the news. They draw on a special pad that puts a picture straight onto a computer. Well, guess what's back in the studio? The globe. <laughs> Let's take a look at it now. But in the studio, there were some limitations. I had a globe in the studio and if we did a story about somewhere on the other side of the world, I had to spin the globe around from where here to around to there. And quite often I would lose it. So, you know, you kind of move the globe around and then suddenly go, God, where is whatever country it is? But um, a smooth globe point was uh, a considerable achievement and, you know, we worked hard to try and make that happen. Been somebody blown it up by now. <laughs> I would have <laughs> pushed it down. <laughs> Main North Road or something. There you go. <laughs> For the record, the globe has survived. Sorry, Paul. Moving into the 90s, BTN introduced its audience to two new things. Host, Tanya Nugent, and the internet. We've been thoroughly road testing our page on the World Wide Web, and it's now open for business. You know, I really love the website. I like how they've taken that. You know, BTN was the first ABC program to have a website, have its own website. It wasn't just the website they were road testing. The BTN team have taken the concept of focus groups further by actually watching the watchers in situ. You see them fiddle when they get bored, so you know that, you know, obviously what you were doing there was a little bit boring. You know, I'd been trying to get other jobs, you know, I'd been um, approached by Channel 9, I'd been approached by Channel 7. And you know what they used to say? I'd overhear them. It was all about my hair and what are we going to do with it? You know, they wanted to straighten my hair and I, I actually lost two jobs because I didn't want to do that. So I was just thrilled that somebody was giving me a job and letting me keep my hair curly. Hello again and welcome to another BTN. I'm Tanya Nugent. So after decades of men hosting the show, Anne got her wish. I was the first female host and certainly they hadn't had any, you know, persons of colour hosting the show before. But, you know, but kids don't care about that stuff. You know, it's, it's, it's how you connect with them and I'm a bit immature. So, I still am. Uh, so, you know, of course, you know, I could relate to 12-year-olds quite easily. In April 1994, the country held its first free election. Nelson Mandela became the country's first black president. The first show was really cool. It was around the time when apartheid had ended and, uh, you know, all of that stuff was going down. And because I'd grown up in Papua New Guinea and stamped in front of my passport was a big thing that said not valid for South Africa. So, I... Uh, you know, it was a really wonderful, kind of fabulous, groundbreaking, you know, transformative piece of news that I was coming in, coming in on. Hello again and welcome to another BTN. I'm Tanya Nugent. Tanya Nugent joined BTN just as the show celebrated its 25th birthday. What they didn't know then, and we know now, is that the show actually started a year earlier. So it was really BTN's 26th birthday, not its 25th. Hmm. But they had a nice party all the same, with the Globe as the guest of honour, apparently. So you will see over the years, when you watch all the footage from day one, the program has evolved so much. In his secret headquarters, the evil genius, Dr. Sick, hatches a diabolical scheme. Number one, I have an evil plan to create mayhem and chaos. What is it, Dr. Sick? A poison? A dreadful bomb? No, even better, it's disease. But then what we started doing, and it's a formula that they're using now, is injecting kids into our packages. 
I remember at the time being quite startled by the way that the show yeah, incorporated uh, popular culture. What now? There's a hole in the budget. What do you mean? Help me the hole. Billions. It's not a tax, it's a levy. Aren't they the same thing, sire? <laughs> no. I like their stories and the dress-up things they do, and I also like, like their news break and their quizzes. Their quizzes are really good. It gets me thinking. Now it's time for our first quiz. What year were women given the right to vote in Australia? Was it 1802, 1902 or 2002? The answer is 1902. It's actually a lot harder to do than regular news and current affairs packages. I saw this human and I was like, this is my house and boom! And don't come back! Can you spell that? It's like shake and spear with an E on the end. I'm Batman. I am Dracula. I am Android Jack. Hi, Dad. Hello, son. <sighs> I watched it and I was like, this is good. I look forward to it because you never know like what they're going to be speaking about. BTN's unique style made an impact on millions of kids throughout the years. Just how important is your job? It even encouraged some to get into the industry. Just fine tuning, fine tuning, okay? When I was younger, I watched Tanya Nugent present BTN and from that time, it made me want to be a storyteller. BTN was really my only way of finding out what was going on, so it was really, really important. Well, I think it probably put in my mind that this was something that people actually did for a living. I loved BTN as a kid because it was presented for kids. It was something that I could latch onto, like I could really relate to it. And they kind of were excited to tell the stories they were talking about, and I'm like, that's what I want to do. I lived in a non-English speaking household. The way I learnt about things in English were through shows like BTN and then of course I did progress to the nightly news for adults. I don't even know when I quite did that because I held on to BTN probably longer than you're allowed to. Watching BTN as a kid did something to me and made me realise that you can have a job and a career in the media. It definitely inspired me to take up journalism. I love the idea of uh, communicating the news to a wider population and doing it in a relatable way, and I think that's what they used to do. I think it's safe to say that without BTN, I wouldn't be the vaguely recognisable TV personality I am today. The ABC has announced significant cuts to its education, news and current affairs budgets. The cuts are designed to save more than $26 million this financial year after the ABC failed in its bid to get extra federal government funding. And after more than 30 years on air, the children's news program, Behind the News, will finish at the end of the year. Like, I remember my girlfriend downstairs said to me, they've axed, they've axed BTN. And I said, no, no, they wouldn't do that. We've been told it was safe. Um, I said, no, 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 you've got that wrong. And she goes, no, I think you should check. And I came upstairs and they said, no, they have. And I was, it was so sad. I was quite devastated by that. I was in the shooting something in the middle of Mount Gambier and I turned around, drove all the way back to be there for the protest. After going behind closed doors with behind the news staff, Mr. Balding emerged rejecting claims he's trying to hit the government where it hurts. I was actually horrified. I, it, that really got to me, it upset me. Yeah, I thought that was a stupid thing to do, an absolutely ridiculous decision. This is a show that was watched by 90% of schools in Australia. There's nothing like it being done. But many people, kids, teachers and parents weren't going to take the news lying down. BTN viewers and ABC staff were ready to ambush Russell Balding as he arrived at the ABC's Adelaide complex. Do you like BTN? Yeah! So I look yes. very young. So what are we going to tell Russell Bolden? Keep BTN. Yeah. yeah! I was very upset when I heard that BTN was being uh, axed, uh, particularly just as a cost-cutting measure. Excuse me, Mr Bolden, are you uh, surprised at the public concern over the decision to ax BTN that we saw? And there were a good ten people here in the ABC at Collinswood who were going to lose their jobs as a consequence. This is my old primary school. Do you want to come and have a look? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Cool. 
In the Adelaide Hills, 10-year-old Georgia got involved in the campaign to save BTN by encouraging all of her friends to sign a petition. So Georgia, I have something here that I want to show you that might bring back a few memories of primary school. <laughs> we found this in our office and it has your name right at the top of it. Yeah, right. Do you want to have a look at this? It says oh save goodness. BTN. Oh, this is when it was, yeah, going to be taken off air, crikey. I was like so disappointed. I remember when, um, yeah, when I found out it wasn't going to be going anymore. Um, because I loved it, I loved learning and um, it was it was fun. Oh my goodness, these signatures. You can say memories. <laughs> I've got like my, my grandma <laughs> first on the list and then my mum <laughs> and my sisters, my dad. Why did you feel so passionate about BTN that you actually went and collected all these signatures from all of these family and family members and friends? Yeah, I think, you know, for me, BTN was like a voice for, um, you know, the stories that it told. And uh, I thought, you know, um, I was really disappointed when it, when it was not going to be airing anymore, um, that I wanted to be a voice for BTN. And I thought that, you know, get as many people as I can and maybe together we can all be voices for BTN and maybe bring it back on my air. Classroom, put BTN in my classroom, my classroom now. The principals rallied blindfolded, claiming a lack of support for children's news programs is leaving their students in the dark. People said, well, we've got to come up with something that will help to emphasise how important it is to us. And uh, one of our executives said, well, why don't we put blindfolds on? And someone said, how about this catchy little tune? And this all came together, I can tell you, in a matter of hours. Did you know there have been 1,190 episodes of Behind the News? And this is almost the end of the last one. We've had a fantastic time making the show. But at the end of 2003, the ABC hadn't changed its mind. So BTN was no more. Um, most of us went to work on other programs. It wasn't until nearly a year later that they all heard the news they'd been hoping for. The ABC has announced that the popular education program Behind the News will return next year. Well, I thought that it should never have been uh, axed in the first place, so they undid what was a mistake. It's good to be able to admit when you've made a mistake, and uh, they did, and so they should get credit for doing so. Well, I was kind of relieved that I hadn't killed off the show, because <laughs> I'd only been here for three or four months when they axed it, and I thought, oh, gosh, I'm the curse of BTN. Yeah, I was pretty excited. Like, I think it was a bit surreal to think that, um, you know, that I'd made a difference. It was just a dumb decision, and I'm glad somebody very smartly put it back the best show. Hello, I'm Krista Eleftherio. Welcome to the program. It's nice to be back. If also a program is axed, you think, you know, there is that initial you, backlash and then things die down and programs don't tend to come back and BTN came back. And it not only came back, you know, it just it kept building and building and, you know, it went it turned into something of an empire over the, you know, years following that. I grew up in a farm. 2007 saw a new look team, including a fresh-faced Nathan Baisley, who would go on to become the show's longest running host. It's hard to tell whether the hair or the clothes changed more over the years. Then I'll catch you then. When you've been on the show as long as I had, uh, you're bound to make a few mistakes. Uh, I made about 40. Um, it was a different time. If someone asked you where most of the world's movies are produced, you'd probably say Hollywood, right? But you'd actually be wrong. It's Bollywood. They produce over 1,000 movies in a year. And it's a lot of fun too. Good evening and welcome to Real News. I'm John Johnson. So let's take it down a notch. not have been the right thing to say there. Working with kids and, you know, funny role plays and things like that, usually something ridiculous happens, but I, I managed to avoid it through 10 years. Yeah, love that. Thank you. Hey, how's it going? Jack here with a BTN news break. Coming up tonight. Since 2009, BTN's kept kids informed with a daily news show. Hi, this is Maya. And in 2016, it sent then 12-year-old Maya to cover the federal election. Prime Minister, I'm Maya from BTN. Why should young people vote for your party? Thank you very much. Mr Turnbull, why should young people vote for your party? I pushed past the security and <laughs> he didn't answer my question. He smiled and then he just turned around and kept walking. I'm 
Maya from BTN. What is your party going to do to protect and preserve our environment for future generations? Labor's committed to real action on climate change. There's one more thing on my list, and that's to interview the Prime Minister. I'm a little nervous and I'm really cold, but I'm really excited and I hope I get my question in this time. Mr Prime Minister, there's been a big push to get students into science and technology subjects. How do you think this will affect the future of Australia? You know, it is absolutely critical. Science, maths, technology, that's the future. It's your century, you know. I felt like, okay, no, it's fine. <laughs> I feel quite proud to be a part of BTN and I'm really happy that I got the opportunity to like work with BTN because in primary school I watched BTN almost every week and I was in love with like the news format. After 294 days and more than 12,000 drawings, we can finally unveil your welcome book. BTN has also invited kids to have a bigger say in the world around them. So one example of this is the welcome book. And so we opened it up to the kids of Australia and asked them to draw pictures and messages of support and to send them in to us. The Kids of Australia responded. We got about 13,000 pictures sent in and we published a beautiful book that is currently going out to all new young arrivals that come to Australia. My advice to other kids would be to be more confident and, uh, be, um, and be brave about what you do. It's changed massively over the years from 2007 right through to today. Uh, technology is sped up everything that we can do and how we can do it. So now we can you know, easily get footage from a mobile phone from kids right out in the middle of Australia and put that into a story. So that's meant that we can sort of open up the show to kids all around the country and the world. We love the Torres Welcome to where I live. Hi, BTN fans, I'm Kenneth with your quizzy fact of the week. Fact, did you all see kids know that PNG has 800 spoken languages? 800? That's a lot of dictionaries, my green and girl friends. What do you think of me, mate? <laughs> Be honest. <laughs> You're weird and you my best friend. Hi, BTN. My name's Steph, and I'm going to tell you about growing up with a condition you might not know that much about. It all started when I was six years old. That was when I first realised my hair was falling out. The doctor told me I had alopecia. Hello. My name is Declan Crowley. Asperger's is not a word you might have seen before. Describes people who think a bit different, feel a bit different and act a bit different to other people. And it describes me. I thought that having my condition made me ugly. Now I think that, you know, I'm not the kind of beautiful that you'll see on the covers of magazines, but I'm my kind of beautiful. And somehow that's even better. I am envious. <laughs> <laughs> Jealous, looking at it and thinking. If we could have had kids from schools coming in as rookie reporters, as you do, that is fantastic. I'm proud of who I am and what I'm going to achieve in the future. And that's the story of what it's like to be me. And 50 years on, BTN is still explaining news and current affairs to kids and very big kids around Australia. Check with is that right, Sam? I really like BTN. I've been watching it for a long time. I love it. Um, it's really educational. Yeah, I thought it had only been around for like 10 years or something new to this sort of century. I didn't know that like all our teachers watched BTN when they were in school. There's like a fine line between news for kids and news for adults and BTN kind of hits that line straight in the middle and like it's engaging and it's still informational and it's not overly sugar-coated. And I think it's a really, I think BTN's the, like the best. <laughs> Super amazing cool facts. Happy